Hello! Oh, welcome to my blooming alley, which is looking absolutely stunning at the moment. There's a few things I would like to share with you, but first of all, <laughs> what is the definition of alley? In the Oxford Dictionary, it says a narrow passageway between or behind buildings. Another option is a path lined with trees, bushes or stones. And then there's another option, a long narrow area in which games such as skittles and bowlings are played. Well, let me tell you something, there are no games being played in my blooming alley because let's just redefine what the blooming alley is. It is not a long area, but it is certainly a narrow area. It's a tight squeeze. <laughs> And it is lined with blooms when the orchids are in bloom. So that is why Blooming Alley. I guess that is just stating the obvious. However, <laughs> this time around, I do have a few things to show you and I want to share this space with you. So thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it a lot. Happy Independence Day. Happy 4th of July to the United States. All of you that are over there, all of you that are overseas, I hope that you have a wonderful and safe day. So, happy 4th of July to all US citizens around the world. I remember when I lived in the States, it was a big deal and everybody was well excited for the day. So, I really hope that you thoroughly enjoy it. Now, I did a teaser trailer for this space to hopefully get some attention because when beautiful things happen and you wander through your space all on your own, um, you would rather have somebody to jibber jabber about with what you are seeing. That's what I'm going to do here today. However, when I aired my teaser trailer 48 hours later, I have still been battered with some serious wind. I wouldn't even say it was hot. It's just dry. I mean, you can see my Lelia purpurata variety, Rackhoiseri striata right there. She has only been open four to five days and the blooms are collapsing. It's just been relentless. Luckily, the angle of the sun is so high, I don't have to have the curtain down for the south side of this little blooming alley because the curtains are being bashed and torn if I had to have them down all the time. The back one against the Tolumnia wall back there that's facing west, at least it's holding up with clothes pegs. Now I know I'm on the coast here in southern Spain and we do get a lot of wind, but it is nothing like it has been throughout these past weeks. Usually we get the Poniente three days and then it just stops. Then we get a Levante another three days and it just stops. But this has been continuous. Only one day in about two and a half, almost three weeks have I had from this violent wind. It's not even a breeze. It's just unpleasant to say the least. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, <laughs> it's a bit of a tight squeeze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through all the blooms that I have and I will show you close-ups as I go through them. Astonishingly enough, I still have a nobly in bloom. Dendrobium nobly, my goodness, normally by this time would be out of bloom. The blooms would be frazzled. It has been that kind of a spring, early summer. It's been far too cool. So the blooms have lasted very, 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 very long. But still, I'm enjoying the freesia fragrance, which is just divine. And I still have my Brassavola tuberculata in bloom, little guy, that has also been giving me gorgeous night fragrances, which are very, very welcome because I do frequent this space at night as well. On my top shelf, I don't really have anything going bloom-wise. There's a lot of activity and we'll show that in another video, but I do have some spikes coming on my Coilo Stylus Ciliaris. Super excited about those spikes. I haven't seen the blooms in two years. Next to my Ciliaris, I also have Dendrobium Hibiki taking its time to open. Normally around about this time already have some blooms opening, but again, it's a testament to what has been going on weather-wise in these past months. Never mind, I don't mind Hibiki blooming out late, that means the blooms will last me a lot, lot longer, which I'm looking forward to. When we go back down to the middle shelf, I've got Lelia purpurata, variety back hoisery and beautiful bloom, and there you can see next to it the bashed and bruised blooms of the variety Backhoiseri striata. As I mentioned in the opening, the striata was open last and she looks the worst of them all. 
such a shame the only positive i can draw out of this is that at least the orchid is going to get a rest can take care of her and then the next growth will start eventually but these two blooms next to each other what a gorgeous sight it was in the teaser trailer. I'm a big fan of white blooms. I'm a big fan of that vintage purple in the lip. And that is why I have the Werkhäuserie and the Werkhäuserie Striata because it's like, <laughs> can't get enough of it. <laughs> the fragrance of the two Werkhäuserie blooms, it's just divine. The regular variety Werkhäuserie is much more intense than the Werkhäuserie Striata. It's got lemon sherbet, it's got powdered sugar, and it's got a creamy note to it. Very delicious very obvious to the nose and at eye level unmistakable as I am working in this space it's delicious it's divine the Vecoisery variety striata also has a fragrance but it didn't have time to manifest itself it's not as delicate and delicious as the regular variety Vecoisery but unfortunately seeing as the blooms are already going over I didn't even have time to dedicate these blooms I was waiting for some wind to die down to be able to dedicate them so that's a big shame but the fragrance isn't as intense even if the blooms were perfect had a chance to develop and progress as the standard variety Werkhäuserie but with the two of them next to each other it really does increase the aroma around that space when it comes to fragrance and in competition a little bit that is the Cattleya Siamese Doll Kiwi occupying the next row down the next pot down <laughs> beautiful I am so happy I have two blooms back in my blooming alley the past two years I've always only managed to get one bloom this time I got ahead of the game and had my garlic alcohol in check with these buds as they were forming and no mealy bugs stood a chance and as you can see my bottle is always <laughs> within reach the Cattleya Siamese Doll Kiwi is now open about seven days, looking mighty fine, not getting hammered so much by the wind, has more of a waxy texture, which might help, might not, I don't know, because sometimes the waxy textured blooms will desiccate relatively quickly as well if the air is so dry. But so far they're holding on beautifully, started out in a beautiful green shade before turning into this yellowy hue the fragrance itself is also very floral with a hint of citrus and it's pretty intense there is also a little bit of a plastic note in it and well that comes probably because of the structure being somewhat waxy and firm i don't know but there's a little note of a plastic like a tupperware fragrance however it is not unpleasant these blooms just smell gorgeous you have to get in a little bit close to be able to appreciate it it's not as heady and perfumey as the Verkhoiseries that neighbor this pot still one is close enough and there's always a nose in there somewhere <laughs> and then behind that in the second row but only because she hasn't opened all of her buds yet and I don't want to move the orchid around too much trying to get a good display. That is my Lelia Pacavia for the first time blooming on both leads. She's a first time bloomer in 2021. I'm happy to say that she survived the radical repot and manhandling of the roots very, very well and didn't drop any buds or anything like that within the sheath. And we have a gorgeous display. What I'm still noticing is though that one of the sepals is still flopping forward and that could be because of the conditions not being ideal for these blooms to really do their thing. I am seriously hoping that this wind will stop so that I can hopefully dedicate Kate Lelia Pacavia as well to one of you but uh, I'm not entirely sure and last year I also noticed an imperfection in the bloom that there's a spot that I thought maybe a first time blooming woe that was the case last year but that spot is back but I'm gonna wait and see what the other two buds do when they open because the blooms that are open right now are first time blooming on the second lead the other lead would be a second time blooming lead so we'll have to see if there is still that blemish that spot in the bloom i don't know the whole orchid has had some issues with scale in the years leading up to the bloomings and hopefully there is no virus in her but i don't see the blooms as being virused i don't see color break if you see anything that you think you might have picked up on let me know in the comments but we'll see with the second buds opening it's just exciting to see this orchid get mature and to the point of blooming on both leads just opening up but really taking over the space with its fragrance is the prostechia 
Lancifolia, Cochleata variety Lancifolia. These blooms normally open up very, very quickly, successive bloomings as the spikes grow longer and longer. This is the first year I am noticing how these blooms are taking their sweet time to open. Once again, a testament to the weird, weird conditions. That's okay. That means that hopefully I have a longer period with these blooms open. I can enjoy the honeysuckle fragrance, but my goodness, honeysuckle, it's knockout. It is intense. <laughs> if you're not into being able to grow this orchid with the window open or outdoors, I mean, I'm standing six feet away and I can smell her from here. Meanwhile, the wind is also coming from the west, but still. It's intense and not even the blooms being open all the way. Open your windows if you have a cochleata. <laughs> That's all I can say. Very, very strong. It just happens to be a fragrance that I personally really enjoy. So we're moving along the edge of the rack and we're still on the middle shelf, but the orchid itself lives on the top shelf because that is Coilostylus parkinsoniana. I have two more buds that have yet to open, but oh, talk about nocturnal fragrance. Got the tubercolata to stop at night and say hello to, and then I move over to my Parkinsoniana. The fact this orchid has bloomed for me, I consider that bordering on a miracle. It makes absolutely no sense that she should be in bloom, and I had already resorted to the fact that, well, we're just going to grow this orchid on and make her a bigger, stronger orchid, because the light conditions were so non-existent for such a long period of time, this is a highlight orchid. It was also very, very cold for an extended period of time. This is a warm to hot grower. I just thought, look, please just live for me and we'll figure it out for the next year. But she is in bloom. This orchid was bought in memory of my father who had Parkinson's disease. I know that that is not really a great correlation with an orchid, but you know, Parkinson, Parkinsoniana. He was a warm to hot grower as well, having had his profession in the tropics. It just made sense I needed this orchid in my life. And here she is performing beautifully. I do believe the other buds will open in time so I can have four blooms again on display, as was the case last year, <laughs> because they last so long. Now, touch wood, famous last words. The moment you put it out there, the orchid hobby will turn around and surprise you and say, guess what? Not this time around. I have had Coilostylus parkinsoniana in bloom for three months, not consecutive, but the same blooms to the point where I'm thinking, excuse me, are you even for real? And they always stayed pristine and beautiful until one day it was just like, Bye. I'll see you next time around. So three months, it's just a blessing to have this orchid and have her in bloom and still doing well. Not to be outdone though with whoever takes pride of place. <laughs> no, there's no preferences here. It's how they fit, how tall are they, and am I able to keep the bloom safe while I move around without breaking a bud off or a spike. So at the end of the blooming alley is Ancelia Africana, the first time that an Ancelia Africana blooms in my collection ever. I would like to believe that in Kenya I had Ancelia Africana, but I don't recognize the structure, but hey, who knows? Maybe I've just forgotten. I don't recognize the structure nor the grassiness, and that is why I'm just gonna say, just to be on the safe side, it's the first time that I have Ancelia Africana in bloom. These blooms have been open for almost five weeks. Just amazing. Putting up with the nasty conditions. This orchid has only been in my collection for 11 months. 11 months and two weeks. It would be 11 days to go to make it a full year. So I got this orchid on the 15th of July of 2021 and she has bloomed for me. I cannot be more thrilled. Love her. Her fragrance is... Well, off-putting for some, a welcome fragrance for me. She smells like warm sand. Not the sand, the salty sand that you would expect to smell at the beach, but it's a desert sand which has been warmed and stirred up. It is the warmth of the fragrance that had me very surprised. Selogenies have a dusty fragrance as well, but there's no warmth to that fragrance. It just smells like dust. So <laughs> warm sand, warm dust. I love this fragrance. 
it takes me right back home to Kenya when we were out and about doing silly things on motorbikes and on safari. Wonderful. Next to Ancilia Africana, I've got Tulumnia pomegranate blooming for the second time, third time or fourth time anyway. Three fans have had some spikes growing since we transitioned her into semi-hydro. Very, very pretty. I let her bloom out. I wanted to see if she could handle it, not just the stress of the transition, but to also understand if these could be stress spikes. I've done an update video on this one and that shall air. We'll have a closer look at the two Tolumnias that I have transitioned into semi-hydro. But here we are, the spikes held on. It was a surprise and they are gorgeous and very, very welcome. And you can see I've let them grow pendant. As we are down there, let's go down another little notch. Let's go down the shelf a little bit. And a very, very coveted orchid of mine is my Renanthera monachica. This is my 2.0, having lost the first one due to stem rot. Let me tell you, these orchids aren't as tough as they look. Not the monachicas. Renantheras, maybe, like my Citrina. She seems to be holding on to certain things much better. But when it comes to the Mona Chica, I am so careful. It's almost as if also it was a little bit too cold when the leaf was just, just starting to develop in the crown, even if no water got in the crown because I was not misting throughout the months of February through April for fear of what could happen. Just the extra heavy high humidity in the air and that crown was close to being compromised and I didn't even know it was happening. Luckily, the leaf is extending. We got away with that one, seriously dodged a bullet because a 3.0 would have been on the cards. I don't want to be without the orchid, but I also don't want to keep losing monachicas and the blooms are back. Again, a highlight orchid, a hot to warm grower, had none of that leading up to blooming and here we are with blooms. I really do not want to repeat the anxieties of spring. Seriously, I do not want to. And I don't want to make this a test to see if these orchids really can do what they do without so much light or so much heat. Please, as far as I'm concerned, it was a one-off, it worked. We've got Renanthra Mona Chica in bloom, but that's it. Don't do this to me again next year. I'm not sure I would survive another season like that. So Roy Tokunaga is pretty much failing. It's going out of bloom. I cut some of the other spikes off that were in bud because everything is being pushed back into the season so much. I would like to have new growths get stronger as opposed to this orchid blooming. But for the sake of this video, I left these last blooms on. And then after filming, they will come off and let her recover and gain some strength. Next to the Roy Tokunaga, we have my beautiful Pinkton Bronze Age, still in bloom, still has a gorgeous fragrance as well. The blooms aren't fading, but the fragrance isn't as strong, or it's because the Tabasco text underneath is just overpowering the space where the two of them live, because the Skittles fragrance with a hint of chili from the Tabasco text, make no mistake, it is evident, it is obvious, and oh, is it delicious. <laughs> oh, if you're into desserts, a little bit of heat and a kick of chili to match the sweet tooth. Oh, this is good stuff. Now she looks all a little bit bunched up. She is getting ahead of herself, leading up to this blooming. Of course, the conditions in spring did not allow me to give her any fertilizer. So the spikes developed without any kind of help from nitrogen. Everything is a little bit more bunched up, more together. Now, she's not an orchid that would get a long spike like a sweet memory does, but definitely not so clustered. Gorgeous. And speaking of sweet memory, we almost forgot her. She is still in bloom, tucked away there with the cochleata. Meanwhile, the cochleata is just drowning out her fragrance, but that's okay. Her two blooms are still looking lovely. The third bloom, the last bloom to open, deteriorated after I got to dedicating her. It was just like, nope, I'm done. I bloomed and that's it, I'm off. And she just fell off. It was like, I didn't bump her. I didn't, what, was it something I said? It sure wasn't something I did or didn't do. <laughs> We have Carmen here, it's a Tulumnia, no ID. Carmen was given as a name from an orchid ninja, Snow Dragon Kassan, and I thought it was just perfect fitting. The red should be much more vibrant, but these blooms are old. I'm just waiting for the orchid to absorb the spikes. Otherwise, these blooms would not be on this orchid anymore. There's been plenty of branching, but anyway, that would be Carmen. We're gonna include those blooms. Blooms are blooms, no matter what they look like. 
with the exception of course of my dendrobium unicum now i'm really pushing the bar here they will be falling off if not today but by tomorrow however i love this orange so much when the victoria regina is in bloom right next to her as well i am super happy to see this combination even though the unicum is not fresh anymore you can't believe it but she's still giving off that fanta orange fragrance it's truly truly remarkable and insane and i think these blooms have lasted a good part of six weeks now again as a result of the temperatures not being what they would have been this time of year. But to see the color combination now, we have Dendrobium Victoria Regina, and I believe I have three different Victoria Reginas on here. You see, I bought two pots at the time when they were on sale, and I already then thought, okay, there's gonna be a difference, but as the canes are blooming out one by one, I have one that has the cute little white dots at the petals and sepals at the end there. It always reminds me of what little puppy tails look like in a litter if they have the little white part right at the end of their tails that is that bloom and that's how i differentiate the different blooms of my victoria regina so one has those little white spots and one not so much also much more saturated in color i don't know if the camera is going to pick that up but the color is much more saturated i don't have as distinct lines and differences in color when it comes to the petals and sepals but i think the third option is not blooming at this point in time the third one that I recognized as well was even more on the paler side. So it wasn't exactly one of the prettiest of the three. Meanwhile, if I'd only gotten the third option and not had this mishmash of different ones, I would have just settled for it and happy that it's surviving and doing well. But my absolute favorite is the deep saturated one. And that is beautiful and I'm glad it's here with me. So whether I've got three Victoria Reginas on the same mount, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they're blooming next to that we've got dendrobium bensonier which surprisingly was bought to replace the unicum that is next to it because the unicum came with a snapped cane and i was so afraid the unicum would not live to make it so i didn't have much to work with with my unicum when it arrived and i ordered a replacement and then I got this other dendrobium and I thought, well, if that is my unicum replacement, it's a big one and it's a healthy one. But it looked so different. The unicum canes are narrow at the base. And well, this one, there's no such thing as narrow at the base. So I was a bit confused, but hey, let's see what it does. And it turns out it was a bensonier, which was identified for me by Lo Han. I think it was Lo Han. I know Lo is in the name. So if you see this video and you want to correct me on that, please feel free to do so. And I'm sorry if I don't remember your name correctly, but L-O is in your name and it's very short. Lo Han, I believe. Anyway, Dendrobium Bensonia, at this point in time, I'm not getting a fragrance, but I now have this blooming as opposed to when we identified the blooms last year where I only had three. The cane that I grew has gotten exponentially bigger. It has developed a second lead as well, which is a smaller cane, which pretty much is a reflection of what I had when I got her two years ago. But now the first lead is really, really maturing. And you can now see I have actually four new leads going on this orchid. It's going to be a spectacle come 2023. And that is not me diminishing what I'm seeing here now. Gorgeous, gorgeous blooms. And here we have the alley effect. <laughs> this is truly a blooming alley at the moment a narrow space <laughs> surrounded from both sides by blooms because next to that is the dendrobium polyanthum very delicate little bloom has sort of the similar kind of texture to anything akin to an aphyllum of course not the same shape but it has the sparkles and it has a gorgeous sugary licorice fragrance which is relatively obvious from where i am stood remarkable love it these blooms hopefully are going to last me long enough to dedicate them but you can see that they're going to be very difficult to film if the wind keeps doing what it's doing it is horrendous sorry for repeating myself i'm getting so frustrated by this wind polyanthum is giving me a better show than i expected considering how spread out the canes are 
but it's maybe because of how spread out the canes are that the blooms actually have space to show themselves as opposed to being all scrunched up. It's also growing, I, what I can count, four new growths plus two keikis in the back, a very busy orchid at the moment. Right, <laughs> we're not done yet. <laughs> At this point in time, I'm glad my Phalaenopsis corner survey variety Chatella Day has blasted her buds. Otherwise, you know, how much time have you got? <laughs> okay, keep going. We're going to the bottom shelf now because I have to do cartwheels around the patio, seeing as my blooming alley is a tight squeeze. I can't fit in there. Lelia Zip, fanfare balloons, party time. For a first time bloomer, she's got two spikes. Both leads are in bloom and we have matured a seedling orchid all the way up to blooming size at Ninja Orchids. This is the first time I get to see Lelia zip blooms in person. Now, the longest spike already has all the blooms open. The only reason I'm holding it up is as a visual reminder to myself not to knock it when I take the orchid out to flush it. Also, I didn't want to move the second spike up just yet because there's another bud that has as yet to open. Well, I would like to avoid a funky display. <laughs> Let's put it that way. We'll see what we can do, but Lelia Zip, first time bloomer. I'm patting myself on the back to get her to this point. Very, very happy to have another blooming size orchid in my collection. Next to that is the Lelia Purpurata variety striata. Another first time bloomer that really has lived up to the name, to the expectations that I had for this bloom. Here she is, the first Purpurata to open for me almost four, maybe five weeks ago, has tolerated the harshest of wind conditions. I thought her blooms were gonna collapse after day two. Well, that didn't happen with this one, but it did happen with the Verkhoiseri striata. So this one has absolutely exceeded any expectation that I had. I did not get a fragrance from her this year, however. Well, you know, first time blooming to get three blooms to hold on so long, resist the horrible conditions, she is starting to look a little tired now. And if you just heard something in the background, like a timer, <laughs> let me tell you what I've done. Because I've got the RO system on production every time a bucket is empty, seeing as I'm misting so much these days, I bought myself an egg timer just so that the RO system wouldn't pour over a bucket and I set it to one hour. So when that rings, I have to check how the bucket is doing in the kitchen and I'll be right back. <laughs> Oh my word, I just saw the time, how long I've been talking. I just want to say thank you if you're still here. Well, my next bucket is full and the next one is already underway. I've set my egg timer again. <laughs> I had to because I was getting so distracted with editing, with misting, with filming and all that stuff. I literally forget about the bucket and I hate it if RO water is leaking over the edge of the bucket. I absolutely hate it when that happens. So enter the egg timer for the season of 2022. <laughs> it's amazing. It's working a treat and I don't feel like such an idiot. Except when I'm at my desk editing and I hear the tick, 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 tick. I'm kind of deep into what I'm doing. It is a little bit annoying to say the least. I feel like I'm I'm timing myself <laughs> and then can you imagine you're so focused on what you're doing you're right there right in the middle of a thought process figuring something out making sure it all fits and then brrr, it's like whoa <laughs> it's like yikes shocker oops and I can see a curtain has moved through the tolumnias I can't let that happen I'll be right back that's better 
You gotta have eyes everywhere. <laughs> Orchid helicopter mom here. Yep, that's me, I admit it. Okay, an alley normally has, you know, one opening, dead end or not, whatever. In our case, it's a cul-de-sac, but behind me, I have an orchid that I always see, always appreciate, and she rarely gets featured because she's a little bit difficult to film. And also, whoops, there goes the curtain again. The moment water drops onto a lip, it's like watercolor. The lip gets a little washed out. So it makes very difficult to dedicate this orchid, but she's my Dendrobium seraula. A beautiful, vigorous little orchid. That is one heck of a drinker when in active growth and when in bloom. So it's pretty hard to avoid getting water on the lip of the blooms. It's just, well, you would have to grow it potted up. Anyway, in my case, she's not potted up and she is just gorgeous in bloom, love the pink, love all the little pixie dust she throws at me when I get to see her, don't feature her much. Sometimes aphids find her because they find this bloom super appealing, I mean how can you not, she's gorgeous, but she is behind me on the east side, pretty much we are surrounded by blooms. <laughs> It is true though, I don't have any blooms tucked away anywhere else apart from my complex Phalaenopsis hybrids that are indoors. But this was about the blooming alley and wow, goodness me. In a way I feel bad I took up your time, but on the other hand, I hope that you chose a time where it was convenient for you to join me in my blooming alley and it didn't feel like I was taking up any of your time. I'm trying to be respectful of your time in that way. Sometimes you've just got to stop and take the time. So with all that being said, I think it is time, <laughs> I can't help it, sorry, to wish you a beautiful, beautiful day. On one condition though, that you please stay safe and take care. Bye. Make sure that you adhere to all the safety precautions if you're going to be involved with fireworks today. Again, happy 4th of July. Bye.